So you've been running Rancher at home and up until now, it's been running great. And while things are running great now, they may not always. And you know that backing up things in general is always a good idea, but you haven't backed up your Rancher server yet. And also, you've seen lots of releases out there for Rancher, and you want to update to the latest version. Keeping Rancher up to date is also a good idea. Rancher releases updates pretty often, and they include security fixes as well as bug fixes and performance improvements. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I haven't backed up Rancher yet, and I haven't checked for updates. Join me as I walk you through how to do this in just a couple of minutes. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about updating Rancher as well as backing it up. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about Rancher there, we can. So let's talk about backing up and updating Rancher. So Rancher, like any service, needs to be backed up and needs to be updated over time. Now, I don't need to go into detail as to why this is a good idea. If you're running any software at home, you know that this is a good idea. And while backing up and updating Rancher might be a bit confusing, I'll walk you through step-by-step step of how to do this. Now, if you followed my previous guide on installing, configuring, and deploying Rancher and Kubernetes at home, you're in a good spot and you're good to go. You're ready to follow this tutorial. But if you followed some other guide on the internet, that's fine too. Just be sure that you're running a single node using Docker because other installation methods have different backup and different update requirements. But if you're running Rancher 2 on a single node using Docker, you're welcome to use this guide. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So first you want to make sure that your Rancher server is running. Once you're in your Rancher server, you want to verify a few things. We should be able to go into our default cluster and see that our services are running. Next, you want to take note of the version. That's at the very bottom. So if you see down here, I'm running version 2.4.3. Now yours might be different, but that really doesn't matter right now. Just take note of it. If you click on the version, you'll get some more details. But this is the version that matters to us, v2.4.3. Next, we'll want to SSH into our Rancher server. Once we SSH into our server, let's create a backups folder. So I've created a backups folder right in my home directory. Mine's called rancher underscore backups. So once that's folder there, we'll want to check to see which Docker image we're using. So to check to see which rancher image we're using, we can just run docker ps. So what we're looking for in here is a rancher slash rancher image. Now you can see here that I pulled rancher slash rancher with the tag of latest. This is okay for now, but we should probably pin this to a specific release. And that's why we check the Rancher version from the UI. Moving forward, we'll pin this to a specific release so that we can update this easily and keep track of backups. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually stop this Docker container. And the command to do that is docker stop and then the container name. So let's run docker stop and our container name. So our container name is here. It's rancher underscore docker underscore server. Then hit enter. So this should be stopped now. We can check by running a docker ps again. And we shouldn't see it on this list, but if we also want to see stopped images, we can run a docker ps a. docker ps a. And we'll see here, it's the last one on the list. We can see that it exited 20 seconds ago. So our rancher server is now stopped. If we go to our rancher server, we can see that the connections refuse, which means it's down. So that's a good thing. So next we'll want to CD into our rancher backup folder and make sure that we're in there. Next, we're gonna run our backup command. So this command looks like this. So we're gonna run docker create volumes from, and then our container name, and then we're gonna name it rancher-data along with the date, and then we're gonna specify the container tag. So the command will go something like this. So the container name is gonna be the one that we stopped earlier. That's rancher underscore docker underscore server. Now the backup file, we're gonna fill in the date. Really, this can be anything you want, but I highly recommend the date. So I'm gonna do 2020. 06, 21. And next we're gonna specify the tag we used. Now we use latest in our tag, but we probably don't wanna back this up using latest. We wanna specify the exact version number we were using. So we're gonna replace this with v2.4.3. And then we'll run this command. Okay, so what this just did was create a data container for our backups. This allows us to access the data from the container for our rancher server that we stopped earlier. So now we'll create a backup tarball of that volume. So the command looks like this. We'll need to replace a few things. So with the volume that we mounted, we're gonna fill in the same date, 2020, 06, 21. And here's the backup location. So it's our current directory, map to, the Docker container slash backup folder. Then we're gonna run the BusyBox image. Then we're gonna tar it up. Then we need to replace our Rancher version. So this was v2.4.3 with the date. 
2020, 06, 21. So now we can just hit enter and should back it up. So this backup might take a little bit of time, it just depends on the speed of your system, but be sure to let it run to completion. Okay, looks like it's done. Let's take a look. So there it is. If we run an LS, we can see Rancher Data Backup with the tag version that we specified this time, and then the date in the file, so 2020.0621. So now you want to be sure to move this to a safe place or back this folder up, because this is the only backup you have now of your Rancher server. Next, we'll want to delete that volume we created. So let's run a docker ps-a. And we can see here the name of the container that we created with our volume. You can also see one here that I, I had a typo in. So let's delete them both. So let's run docker rm, the name, and we'll run docker rm, the name of the one I had a typo in. So if we run docker ps-a again, these should be gone now. Now it won't hurt anything to keep them there, but it's just good housekeeping. So let's start our Docker server back up. So if you don't remember the name of your Docker server, we can run docker ps-a again. Here's the name of our Docker server. It's rancher underscore docker underscore server. And then we can just run docker start the name, hit enter, run docker ps again. And here it is, it started up two seconds ago. And if we go back to our Docker server, it should be starting up and all of our services are running again. Okay, so that was pretty easy. We now know how to back up our Docker server. You might want to run this on a schedule or every time you go to upgrade your Docker server, which is a good segue into upgrading your Docker server. That's why I focused on backing it up first. Okay, so upgrading a Rancher server is pretty easy too. We've already covered half of it by backing our server up. So from a high level, it looks like this. First, we're going to create a backup of all the data inside of our Rancher container. Next, we're going to create a tarball. Then we're going to pull a new Docker image. Then we're going to start the new Rancher server container. Then we'll verify the upgrade. And then we'll clean out our old Rancher server container. So we just covered the first couple of steps. Let's hop into pulling our new Docker image. We're going to need to stop this container again. After the backup, we spun it up just to verify, but we'll need to stop it again. So to check, we'll do Docker PS. We see our Rancher container running right here and its name is Rancher Docker Server. So let's stop that. So Docker stop, Rancher underscore Docker underscore Server. Looks like it stopped, but let's check. So Docker PS dash A. And we can see our Rancher Server exited seven seconds ago. So it stopped. You really want to verify, we can go back to our server and refresh and we should see a connection timeout. There it goes. Now this is where you would back up your whole entire Rancher config again skip back a minute or two, then we'll want to pull the new Docker image. So it looks something like this, docker pull rancher slash rancher, and then a tag of the latest version. We aren't going to use the latest tag. We're going to be a little more careful and we'll get the latest release tag. So if we go out to Docker Hub, we can check to see what the latest rancher server is. We scroll down here. It looks like the latest image is v2.4.5. So we'll add that to our command, v2.4.5, hit enter and we should pull it down now from Docker Hub. Okay, so now we have the image. The way to check is run Docker images. And if we find rancher slash rancher, we can see that we have a tag of 245. So this is just the image now. We have this image cached locally. It's not the container. So now let's start the container. Okay, so to start a container, this is actually pretty easy. We run the same exact command we use to install it. So what's not so easy about it is you have to remember the command you use to install it. So you want to be sure you have this somewhere. Typically, I keep this stored somewhere so I can easily copy and paste it. But if you followed my previous tutorial, it looks something like this. Now, the one thing we're going to change is we're actually going to pin our Docker image to the one that's in Docker Hub. You can see here that we're using the tag of latest. And generally, this is how I use most Docker images when I spin up my containers. But for Rancher, I'm going to pin it to a specific version just so I know exactly what version is being used in the case that I need to restore it. So the latest version we saw was v2.4.5. So we should be able to hit enter here. And if you do hit enter and get an error here, that's to be expected. That's because we're already using this container name. Now you can choose a new container name or you can delete the container that's there. So we'll have to remove that container or choose a new name. So to check, we run docker ps a and we can see the container with the name rancher docker server is still there. So let's remove that. So we can do docker rm, the name, hit enter. So that removed that container. And now let's try running that command again. 
Okay, it's working. Let's run Docker PS. We can see our server's up for four seconds now. Let's go back into our Rancher server, refresh, and here we go, we're up to date. So we can see at the bottom now, we're using v2.4.5. So a quick note, that upgrade can take some time. Rancher recommends to never stop that container and let it complete. So if it were taking a long time, we can check the logs and we can tail them out. It would go like this. First, let's run a Docker PS. Then we'll wanna find the ID of our container. Mine's right here. Then we'll run Docker logs container ID dash dash follow. And here we'll see the tail of the logs. Now, if your server's still upgrading, you'll see lots of logs being generated. And if you see any errors in here, you'll wanna to try to track them down. But again, Rancher recommends never stopping the upgrade process until it's done. So we can quit here and go back into our server and test some things out to make sure things are still running. So the last thing I just wanna to touch on is restorations. So what you would do if your Docker server was down or your data was corrupt. That's pretty straightforward too. The first thing you would do is stop your Rancher server, verify it stopped. And we see here it stopped about a minute ago. Then we'll wanna be sure we're in the directory where our tarball backups are. And that's here, rancher underscore backups. Do an ls, we see our tarball here. So here's what the command looks like that will run to restore our rancher server. So it's docker run, volumes from, and then our container name with the volume of the present working directory, which should be our backups. And this is mapped to the backup folder inside of that container. Then we're gonna run BusyBox and we're gonna remove all of our Rancher data and untar our current tarball to that server. So this is gonna wipe out all of your data in your Rancher server, so be sure you wanna do this. So we can hit enter here. And again, you'll see some commands flying by. This means it's working. And if we run a Docker PS-A, we should see our Rancher server stop, so let's start it. So we can run Docker start Rancher Docker server, start it back up, Docker PS. We should see this in the list, and so it started two seconds ago. And we can go out to our Rancher server and see it's running. So that's how easy it is to back up, restore, and upgrade your Rancher server. You'll just wanna be sure that this is a single node Docker install. But as you can see, the process was pretty simple. And so now you really have no excuse to back up your Rancher server. Highly recommend doing one right now just in case. So did I miss anything in this video? Is there something about Rancher backups, restores, or upgrades you'd like to see? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And as a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. And to me right there that says, okay, you know what, wherever I map this folder, that's what I need to back up. That's what I need to back up. I don't need to look at any documentation anywhere or read anything because I know that this container can only write to this path. I mean, it can write to these two, but this, this is for your media and that should be backed up too. Um, but I know just by looking at this, okay, my config lives right here. And you know, if that's slash home slash Tim slash flex slash library, that's what I back up, or that's what I store on my FreeNAS server, or that's what I, you know, that's what I store on my, uh, some Samba share somewhere that then I back up.